Good morning. Okay, everyone's paying attention. I know it's just before lunch. Um, so today, Doug and I are going to help you learn how to write an AngularJS plugin. And since this is a hands-on lab, we are going to actually write an AngularJS plugin. Um, so the things we are going to cover today, first we will talk about the overview of an AngularJS plugin and then talk about how this workshop is going to be structured so you have an idea of what to expect. Um, after that, we are going to talk about some basics of the AngularJS plugin um, and the plugin structure that you need to understand. And then we'll move on to lab one, which is basically where you'll start doing hands-on coding. So I hope you all got your coding hats on. Um, <laughs> hands-on, sure. Um, so in the first lab, we are going to start out by writing an AngularJS plugin, which is going to put up a panel in Horizon, so just your basic things. And from that point on, we are going to talk about some development tools and tips that you'll be using or you can be using uh, when you're doing development. Then we'll move on to lab two, which is going to build on what we did in lab one. So for lab two, we're going to um, talk about how you can modify a table that you put up on a panel. More often than not, people are going to be putting up tables on, on panels. So this is a very common um, use case that you'll run into. Um, we'll then deep dive into the Angular, JS, and service interactions. So this is where we will tie in how you're interacting with your APIs and services so that you're getting back data and interacting. Um, and then we'll use the concepts that we are going to learn into lab three and basically add a table row action. So we'll provide you with some code that you can use as a starting point and then add some actions to the table rows. Once we are done with that lab, we'll talk about some other things that you need to know about when writing an AngularJS plugin, like um, how to do a dev stack plugin, as well as updating the Horizon plugin registry. And then we'll um, talk a little bit about what we did with the Load Balancer as a Service version 2 plugin that is um, now released as part of the Metaka release. And then we'll have some references that you can take with you, and then um, we'll wrap it up for the day. OK, um, plugins are basically a way where they allow you to extend an existing functionality as a general rule. And that allows you to not only control what content you have, but it also isolates you from some of the base changes that may be going on in the underlying code. So in our case, for example, if there's changes going on in Horizon, then you, know, you have a way of isolating yourself somewhat. Uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit uh, into your plugin. So one thing you need to understand is Horizon uh, has been on a path to move to AngularJS, the base code, that is. And because there's a lot of code in Horizon, it's not something that's going to happen in one release. It's a you know, work in progress. There are parts of Horizon that have moved to AngularJS, but not all of it has moved. So for example, the launch instance wizard is completely AngularJS now. So that's very important for you to keep in mind when you're writing an AngularJS plugin, because you may run into issues because of changes happening in the underlying code in Horizon. So the best way to do your AngularJS plugin development is to sort of you know, um, coordinate with the Horizon team. If you run into issues, um, be there in the channel with them, OpenStack-Horizon. Uh, it's, you know, the Horizon team is really good. They're very active in the IRC channel as well. So um, you know, just work with them. OK, so let's say you're trying to write an AngularJS plugin. The first thing you'll need to do is create a separate repository. All the AngularJS plugins are in their own repository. And make sure you give it a meaningful name. And what do I mean by a meaningful name? It means that it should have one of the suffixes that are well recognized. So one of the dash dashboard, dash UI, or dash horizon. That's a good suffix to have for your, for your repo name because the infra project will then recognize it as a Django project. 
So it is important to make sure you give it a name that abides by this. Your AngularJS plugin is going to be a collection of JavaScript files and static resources. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we put all our static resources uh, in the static folder. And so you'll see that when we go over the plugin structure and what the tree looks like uh, on where the files are residing. And it's important because um, the Django static collector then knows um, where to um, pick it up and um, uh, distribute to the browser correctly. OK, workshop overview. So things to know about the workshop. First of all, everyone that had RSVP'd up until Friday uh, should have gotten an email from me asking for you to do a, a setup, a pre-lab setup on your uh, laptops. Um, so make sure you've already done that. If you haven't, go ahead and start it now. It does take a few minutes, so it's important that you get that um, going. The workshop is going to be um, covering uh, AngularJS from a code perspective. So the things um, we are not going to cover are you know, unit testing or um, how to integrate your plugin into the infra project or the details of how the translation process is going to work or how can you package your plugin. So the goal here is to write code. So all the peripheral things are not uh, something that we'll cover in this workshop. Um, the workshop is geared towards writing an AngularJS plugin in Horizon. It's not a, a general AngularJS plugin workshop. And now Doug is going to um, take us into more details about an AngularJS plugin and the artifacts that we need to understand from a base concept perspective. Doug? Great, thanks. So if you want to follow along uh, locally on your PC, if you're looking at the code, this might be a good time to do a git checkout. Lab-1 is the tag that uh, corresponds to this code. And so. Um, the first bit of code, if you look at the, uh, the dashboards tree, you're going to see it see a lot of py su suffixes. And you might be thinking, Doug, what gives? I thought this was going to be an AngularJS uh, plugin workshop. Uh, Horizon is still uh, uses Django on the server side. Uh, the plugin, plugin mechanism is still uh, uh, Django Python based. Um, so the, the way that Horizon is, is going to find out about your plugin uh, is still through Django and some of the uh, older mechanisms if you've written Horizon plugins before. Uh, as we go down, in, in particular, we'll talk about this file. This, this is the one that ties uh, your plugin to Horizon and really tells it where to find the other parts. As we, as we look down here under the static bit, uh, this, is where, this is where the fun is going to begin. You'll see we have a couple of JavaScript files. Um, there's an HTML file, and that's actually our first little bit of Angular and our small Angular uh, template that we'll take a look at. So the enabled file. Uh, this is, again, the file that tells Horizon about your plugin and what kinds of things are in it. Um, it has um, uh, it's, it's prefixed with an alphanumeric string that tells it the order is going to be loaded um, by Horizon. So later plugins could overwrite uh, previous plugins. It also tells Horizon what order in the tree um, you'd like your plugin to show up. Again, this is Python code. And this is going the, one of the, the key elements in this file is it's going to point to your panel py, which again, if, you're, if you've written Horizon plugins in Python before, tells Horizon exactly how to represent your panel in the tree and when it should be displayed. So let's take a look at that panel py. So the panel py specifies the uh, name that's going to show up in the navigation. And at the point where I took this screen capture, you can see you know, the name sample here would actually show up in the left side navigation of Horizon. Um, it includes a slug, which is a panel's unique identifier. It's going to end up in the URL for some of the um, Python Django related interactions. And finally, it says who can, who can see this panel or what services need to be available for my panel to be relevant. Uh, here, uh, the, 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 the sample we're building is actually built on um, 
interacting with the neutron service. So we've I've, I've indicated that the network uh, service should be available in order for this plugin to show up. urls.py is a file that, again, is familiar if you've written a uh, Python plugin before. It tells Django where to find the URLs to get to the resources in the code. Um, uh, we're going to see here that, that for, a, for a, um, Angular based plugin, there's actually only one URL that, that's going to be that's going to be mapped, and we're, it's you know the mapping is happening right here, and we are telling uh, Horizon how to find our um, index um, file so that uh, Angular routing can take over. We'll take a look at that later as the lab goes on. So the views.py is is the thing that's referenced by the URLs. And it's um, you know pointing into our 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 uh, project sample index.html. Um, as we take a look inside, we're going to find that that's actually still a, a Django template. All of the Horizon Angular code inherits from this Django template to have appropriate places for the Angular code to plug in. So here is the, the, the Django template. Um, it includes places that are going to be overridden by Angular code. And here's, here's our very first little bit of Angular we're looking at right here. We're telling Angular that the things that go inside the main block here are going to be a view. It's our first, our first tie-in point. Um, a couple of things that might be unique to your plugin, you do, we do still get to set the, uh, the, the title here. Um, yeah, that should, that should be it. So now we're getting to the good stuff. We're actually looking at some, some Angular code at this point. Uh, table that HTML for, for the lab one example is, is, is straightforward. It should look a lot like HTML. Uh, if you've looked at Angular, you might recognize that this HZ page header is actually a, um, uh, uh, an Angular directive. Uh, so there's actually a little bit of code that ties in behind that. Let's just do this sort of uh, templating thing as well um, is Angular. Uh, we'll touch on that during the first lab. Sample module.js is our uh, top-level top Angular file. Um, it's a, um, you know, it's, it's a module. It's always the thing that tells Angular how to find the other JavaScript parts uh, in the code. And it's a good place to put any anything that is um, going to be scoped to your entire plugin constants you may want to use throughout the throughout the application, um, or routing information, or that sort of thing. That's really high level type information. So with that, let's crack open the code. Uh, uh, hopefully everybody's done the setup. I'm happy to walk around and help with that if anybody's had trouble later. But what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go into the Checkout Lab 1 starting point. Um, and we're, we're going to take a look at that uh, you know, panel PY like we talked about and go in and just change the, the, the left navigation so that you can um, see your name in the, left, in the left navigation. And we'll go into the Angular template and go ahead and just uh, you know, change the text to be hello, your name, or some other clever text. So we'll go ahead and take maybe five or, minute, five or ten minutes now, your turn to write code. We'll walk around and answer questions. Thanks. Um, make sure that you do Git Checkout Lab 1, mm -hmm. because we've provided some base code for you to build on to do this lab. Uh, so that'll get you to the point where you're ready to work on this lab. Good point. Thanks, Neela. Mm -hmm. Right, so, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I see, I see, I see. 
Uh, so Martin has asked a good question. The, what I'm saying to do, git check out lab one, you should CD into where the, um, the code has been checked out with the instructions. And so that would be under opt, stack, um, sample, sample dash dashboard. Sample dashboard, yeah, sample underscore dashboard. So change to that directory, where this, and this is the, where the uh, plugin code lives. And go ahead and, and click uh, and check out lab one. Thanks, Martin. Other basic questions that people have before getting started. And just uh, so we are more clear about what we're asking to do, once you do a git checkout lab one, you should see this page. So right mm -hmm. here under um, lab one is a new panel that you should see that has text of hello lab one. So what we want you to do is basically change that so that you have your first name here instead of lab one, and you have your hello first name here instead of hello lab one. So this will help you understand what files are being used um, where. Yeah. I'm sorry, could you repeat the questions? Are the slides posted anywhere? So the slides are not posted anywhere yet, but once the recording is available, um, we'll make the slides available as well. Um, either, um, l you know, I think in the previous releases, uh, I mean previous summits, um, in the schedule they have provided place where you can post slides, or as part of the video recording, we could put a comment where the slides will be posted. So one way or the other they will be available, but later on you'll have to check back. Were you hoping and to the lab repo is um, also available, so you know if you want to continue working on the lab after you go back, you know you have the lab link to the repo, so that will be available. Were you hoping to have the slides available to help step through the lab, or just for reference later? Um, yes, that's what I should do, but it's, it's not on. Okay. A handout. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in case you're wondering what the password is to log in, it's OpenStack1 or lowercase.
So if someone is not seeing their changes reflected on the browser, make sure that uh, you're running that update underscore static script that's provided. So, so, so one uh, awkwardness that is, is apparently built into our lab, there's a uh, goodies directory that has a useful script for updating when you're running from Apache. And there's a, a, a file that I don't see in front of me, update statics.sh or something like this. It would be really great to copy that out of the Git repository, put it maybe in your home directory and run it there. Because as we, as we step through the labs, um, that file is going to disappear. My apologies. I've got a question. So a, a problem that a couple of people have had if you set up last night uh, in your dev stack directory, the local.conf will have a problem line in it. Um, and it's uh, offline equals true. And if you find that you are, are having trouble running dev stack or you're running dev stack and it's not, not finishing, remove that line and then run stack.sh again. That should move people along.
how is progress through the first lab going? It, has anybody looking at their name in their web browser yet? Martin, our hero. Let's take a, let's let's take a few minutes and get through. I think it's I think it's important that we get through this first exercise so you so you have an environment um, that that's working. So I'll just start at the front again. Let's ask your questions and let's let's get people through it so you can so you can see what's going on.
So can I get a show of hands on how many people are done with the lab or uh, at least are able to see the the skeleton dashboard that we had, the page that we had put in? Just trying to get a feel of how far along people are or are people struggling? Um, because we do have lab two and three um, that will basically give you a more Angular JS um, code feel. Is anyone done with the lab one? <laughs> okay, just, uh, I'm sorry? Kind of, sort of is okay too. Okay, so if you're stuck, then raise your hands. Around the a Django web server, and then I got it, it just didn't, didn't find the module. Right. I ran um, ran this command, and then tried to start the web server, and then. Uh, they couldn't find the module, right? So then I I get cloned it, and. Home directory, I have these two directories, and so how do I run this? Run that last command so it finds the the sample dashboard. The last command. Oops, sorry.
Okay, so I see some people have had some success running the lab. Uh, maybe some others haven't. We've slightly surpassed our five minutes allotted to get through the lab, so I think we'll go ahead and move forward. And so we were uh, looking forward to taking this. Uh, modifying it so your name could be seen here, and uh, both in the, uh, the left side navigation as well as within the, the page that has the Angular in it. And these are, these are the code, change I was code changes I was looking for us to make. Uh, here, under in the uh, OpStack sample dashboard directory, uh, I was looking for um, going into the panel PY and just you know, putting in your name here for the name of the panel. That'll, that'll, that's what will show up in the left side navigation. And then inside, uh, underneath the static directory, so that's where the Angular goodies live, uh, going down to the table HTML and just messing with this uh, markup and maybe you know, putting your name inside the markup. So some things that some of us discovered along the way that were useful is uh, using Chrome is a, is, a is, a, is a nice way to get JavaScript debugging. Firefox certainly has a debugger. Um, my personal experience is that when I'm debugging Angular, I get better error messages from Chrome. It's more, what, what shows up in the console is more helpful. There are some horizon, horizon settings that uh, um, some of us may have adjusted. Uh, I want you to be aware of them. Um, so compress enabled false. If we, get, if we get to the point where we're debugging JavaScript, uh, this is a useful thing to do. Um, when your JavaScript is being served by Django without it, it's being all slammed together into one big file with a random looking name. That can be really hard to debug. If you set compress enabled equals false, then it's going to keep those uh, separate. and. Um, it makes the debugging much easier because what you see in the debugger actually matches your source. Also, if you're using the development server, which I uh, covered for some of you in, uh, separately, uh, you're going to need to change your web route to slash so it matches uh, what's being used. Uh, you'll see that sort of information in the Horizon Developer Getting Started information. And again, once we get into writing JavaScript, sometimes it's really simple, a simple debug tool is just to throw a console.log inside your code. It'll spit out uh, an object to the console or a set of objects, and you can see what's going on that way. So again, so we, we, some of us went through this already, but you can run the uh, Django development server from Horizon. And to do, the, to do this, you would go into the uh, op stack Horizon directory, and uh, Horizon has a uh, the Django development server. It does some nice things for you, like uh, reloading code automatically. It's also very easy to run it in a virtual environment if you need to by leaving out the dash n parameter. Um, and so this would start serving up Horizon on port 8081. Again, if you do this, you need to use the configuration settings I showed on the previous chart to change the web route to slash. And also, here's the content of the script. Uh, I think some people actually got to break inside of that already. Um, the, the, to, uh, updates when you, to do the updates when you're using Apache. So you're, you're going to find as you do this development and you put a patch out for review, if you have people who are not really familiar with uh, Horizon Angular looking at it, they'll pull down your patch and it won't work until they do these steps. That, that's why I provided those steps in a, a, a script under the Miss Goodies directory. Um, it'll be useful for you to, to make so your own version of that script and pass it out to your friends as they're reviewing your code. So let's go ahead and move on and talk about some of the Lab 2 uh, uh, materials. Uh, you can go ahead and from the, the opt stack sample um, plugin directory, check out Lab 2 if you want to follow along locally. So sample network py is a file that's um, de defining the uh, REST interfaces to the plugins client. And so it's, actu it's, um, it's actually providing a service from the server that your horizon is going to talk to from Angular to get information. Um, 
people use the word uh, Horizon API for this sometimes, or REST API, um, because it is a point where you're getting, you're going to be serving up uh, uh, JSON from. Yes. Should we commit the changes? Oh, 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 oh. Um, so, uh, I, so the, the question is about how to do uh, get checkout lab two, because I already had you make some changes in lab one. Uh, t two, two ways you can handle that. I'll leave that to your discretion. One is to do get stash. That'll shove off your changes to the side so you can uh, take a look at them later. Or if you think that you understood what you changed and don't want to necessarily refer to that code again, you can just do get git reset dash dash hard um, origin master. And that'll bring you back to the master branch, the master set of code. And then you can do git checkout lab too. So Horizon has some, back, back to serving up uh, JSON from Horizon for your Angular code to consume. Uh, Horizon has some utilities that are useful to help do this. Um, and if you look at the, at the file I've provided, um, you know, a couple of the points to note here are this uh, uh, Python decorator URs, URLs register tells Horizon that the class inside uh, is implementing a REST API that's going to be consumed by, Dang Jang by, by Angular. And uh, it turns out the class name is, is almost irrelevant, but give it a good name and extend generic view. Um, the URL specifies at what URL is my REST API going to be serving from. And then inside, there's another decorator, REST Utils Ajax, that tells Horizon, this is where one of my um, uh, REST methods are going to be implemented. Imp implemented. Uh, for the first sample, I've just implemented a get. So when we want to get the networks, you know, I, I'm making a, a Python call to do that. Uh, one, one of the things we do in Horizon is we wrap the Python calls in an extra level of abstraction. Um, I've said a bit, a bit about it here. Uh, we didn't actually implement one of these for this sample in the same way that we didn't for uh, LBAS dashboard because we were just able to um, uh, import um, the, the existing o uh, Horizon API wrapper. Um, I'll leave the chart here. I'm not going to spend much time on it at this point. So now stepping back to the Angular side. Uh, so the networks controller JS file uh, is an important one to take a look at. This is uh, uh, the Angular controller, and it's gluing the what happens with the view, which is the HTML that we were messing with before, to the model, which is where you know data is coming from. So it's, glu it's it's gluing together the pieces. Uh, some things you're going to see in this file are that we're telling, uh, we're telling Angular in this case. You know, this, this, this code should be part of the, of the Horizon Dashboard Project Sample Networks module. And I am providing a controller. So that means I'm, I'm matching up this text, which I can put into my HTML as a controller, with this JavaScript uh, class name. So here I've got uh, dependencies that are being injected. Um, there's more than one way to do this in Angular. If you're writing a Horizon plugin, it's important that you choose this style of dependency injection. So we're calling out dependencies by, by name here, and we're saying, Angular, when you, when you build my sample network table controller object, please provide me with, with an Angular you know, service API sample network object and a Horizon dashboard sample actions, batch actions object and a row actions object. And so we tell Angular this, and, and Angular is very compliant that way. So when our, our, our controller is being instantiated, it passes in the objects that we requested in the order that we asked for them. So this first API parameter in our JavaScript will correspond to what Angular found for this object, and so on for the other three, um, the other three dependencies. Uh, table HTML, um, 
Uh, so one of the things you'll find now is that the table HTML is updated for lab two. Um, we've called out uh, controller, sample, sample networks controller as table. This is the name that needs to match the name that we registered before. Um, Horizon uses a smart table Angular um, package. And so here we're, we're interacting with, uh, I with that. Uh, this is an important interaction for your table. Um, what this means is that table.source is where your, your controller is going to put the data that you want to be in the table. And smart table is, oddly enough, smart. So it's going to uh, do things like understand that you've sorted your table or you've uh, maybe done some filtering and you're not showing all the items in the table. And so smart table is going to place uh, the sorted and filtered list of items that we're actually working with into table.items so that when we go through later and we're looping through with uh, ng repeat, which is an angular, angular directive, when we're looping through this table, uh, we're gonna loop over only the items that are filtered and in the order that they're, sold, that they're sorted as uh, the smart table informed us. And one other file to take a look at is this uh, sample network service JS file. So this is a wrapper on the JavaScript code that knows how to interact with the, um, the, the REST API. So at this point, our intent was to skip, was to go into lab two. And I think I maybe need to consult with uh, uh, Neela briefly about how we handle our last few minutes and uh, get out the most useful information we can. I don't think we'll finish lab two in our allotted time. So, so uh, give it, given our late time, which we'll wrap up in just a few minutes, I'm going to skip ahead a bit. Um, certainly, we're, we'll make this chart available. You can work through the exercises. I think it's a, it intended to be a step-by-step -step way to, to get familiar with some of the Angular plugin stuff. Um, good stuff here. Don't be sure to take a look at it. But, but I, I want to make sure we have a few minutes to point out the resources, the places you're going to go. Um, to get extra help, to get extra information. Um, one thing to think about as you're writing your plugin is uh, putting a dev stack plugin inside your repository is very helpful. It's an easy way to go out and get your plugin installed in the right context. You don't have to worry about pip installs, remembering to copy over that enabled file all the time. Um, you know, write a dev stack, pl dev stack plugin. It's very simple. Um, and there's one included in the sample project that, that should serve as a good template. The Horizon team keeps a registry of, of plugins. It's really just a file where they list everybody who's working on a Horizon plugin. Um, it, it, it's, a, it's a helpful communication mechanism. It lets people know that your plugin is out there. They can be aware of it. Um, as you start work and you have a repository available, uh, take a look there. Uh, be, register your plugin so the Horizon team knows you're there. Um, my team has worked on, uh, uh, we're, we're here because we worked on a load balancer as a service V2 Angular JS plugin. And so a lot of our sample material was taken from that plugin. Um, if you have questions about how to do more advanced things after you've worked through the tutorial, uh, I think our plugin is a good place to go and take a look and um, uh, see some more advanced usage of how to really you know, fill out a table or do a more advanced form. And so again, here's the re repository for the lab. Uh, there's there's a, a, um, a Horizon tutorial. The Horizon team has written a tutorial, sort of their perspective on how to think about Angular plugins. Uh, I, I think you'll find it's very compatible with what we've talked about today. Um, and our team's uh, Neutron, Neutron uh, LBAS dashboard plugin is available. Again, here's the URL.
I appreciate your time working through the lab today. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I hope you learned a lot, and uh, Angular goes well for you. <laughs>